السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I wanted to share with you a hadith uh, and see what we can learn from this hadith uh, Just in case you're wondering, it is related to uh, what we're going through عن عمير بن أنس عن عمومة له من الأنصار رضي الله تعالى عنهم قالوا غم علينا شوال فأصبحنا صياما فجاء ركب من آخر النهار فشهدوا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنهم رأوا الهلال بالأمس فأمر الناس أن يفطروا من يومهم وَإِنْ يَخْرُجُوا لِعِيدِهِمْ مِنَ الْغَدِّ رواه الخمسة إلا الترمذي وهو حديث صحيح On the authority of Umair ibn Anas who relates from some of his uncles from the Ansar May Allah be pleased with them They said that the Hilal of Shawwal the crescent moon of Shawwal was obscured from us because of clouds. So we woke up in the morning fasting. Let me just quickly translate the hadith and then come back and explain it. So we woke up in the morning fasting. Then a group of travelers, a caravan, came into town at the end of the day. And they testified before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they had seen the Hilal yesterday. They had seen the crescent moon last night. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us to break our fast for that day and to go out for Salatul Eid the next morning. The hadith is related by Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Al Nasa'i, Imam Ahmed, and Al Dara Qutni, and others. Uh, Shawkani mentions it in Nailul Awtar as well, and it is a sound, authentic, Sahih hadith. So, what's he saying? He's saying that this is the 29th day of Ramadan, Chandrat, right? 29th day of Ramadan. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina, he goes out to look for the Hilal with the companions and they do not see anything because it's cloudy. Because they're clouds, they can't see anything. So the next day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands everybody to fast as the 30th day of Ramadan. Okay? The announcement is made, Eid will be the next day. No Eid tomorrow, Eid is the day after. The announcement is made, people wake up in the morning, everybody is fasting. The morning goes by, the afternoon goes by. Before Maghrib, Akhir al right? The end of day, before Maghrib. A caravan comes into Medina. These are travelers who are coming from out of town. They come into Medina and they find out that the people in Medina are fasting. So they come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they say that we testify that last night we saw the Hilal. Because they were out of town at a place where it, was, where it wasn't clouded. So they say we saw the Hilal, we testify to you. Now they're still fasting, the people in Medina are still fasting. As they believe this is the 30th day of Ramadan. When Rasulullah sallallahu hears their testimony, he changes the decision that was announced last night. Last night was announced that this day was supposed to be Ramadan, right? Well now, he knows that the Hilal was sighted. So he announces everybody, break your fast. Why should we break our fast? Well, because the Hilal of Shawwal has been sighted, which means today is what? The day of Eid. And it is haram to fast on the day of Eid. So he announces reversing the decision after Asr of the day. 
People have already spent most of the day fasting. Hilal was cited last night. We have reports now. Break your fast. And what about the Eid prayer? Eid prayer has to be prayed in the morning. His morning is already gone. So he says, tomorrow morning we're performing Salat al-Eid. Tomorrow morning. The hadith is sound. It is authentic. What do we learn from this hadith? Well, we learn several things. That, but there are a few things that I want to highlight, insha'Allah ta'ala. Number one. The importance of Ru'yatul Hilal. The importance of citing the crescent. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not decide that that was the day of Ramadan, uh, uh, the day of Eid, until he had testimony that someone cited the Hilal. He is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah tells him matters of the unseen, right? Doesn't he tell him matters of the unseen, what's going to happen in the future, what is in paradise, what is in hell? He knows the unseen, Allah tells him that. Wasn't it possible for Allah Azza wa Jal to inform Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the hilal is there behind the clouds? Of course it was possible. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to, he could have asked Allah, Ya Allah, we can't see it, please tell us, is the hilal there or not? And he would tell the people. But to emphasize the importance that it's not about whether we know that the hilal is there or not, but whether we see it or not. Knowledge of its presence is not sufficient. It has to be seen with the eyes. And since they did not see it with their eyes, then even though the hilal is there, Allah knows that it is there, and who knows, Allahu alam, if Rasulullah knew that or not it was there, but he announces next day is Ramadan. So the importance of seeing the Hilal to start the month of Ramadan and the month of Shawwal, that's something that we learn from this hadith. But there's something else that we learn from this hadith too. And that is that sometimes it takes time to find out whether the next day is Ramadan or Eid. Sometimes it takes time to find out. In the case of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they didn't have to wait until midnight or one o'clock. They had to wait until the next day, Asr time. That's when they're finding out. And when they find out, the decision is reversed. Nobody comes and complains to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is this? You made us fast the whole day. You're telling us all this hours late. Now we have to basically, we stayed hungry and thirsty for no reason. Uh, we wasted our day of Eid. This is supposed to be our day of celebration. We wasted our whole day. We were supposed to have new beautiful clothes and give gifts to our kids. and Wasted our day of Eid. Alas, we can just fast and let us finish our fast and we'll do Eid tomorrow. Why do we have to break our fast? Nobody complained. Nobody raised a fuss. Nobody made an issue of it. Samirna wa ata'na. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says. That's what they do. Very simple, very easy. But for us, may Allah help us. May Allah help us reach that level of istislam. You see, brothers and sisters, <laughs> we live in an age where we want to control everything. We want to control everything because we have developed so much technology, we can lock the doors of the masjid from home, we can change the temperature inside the prayer hall from Brother Nafis's uh, office or uh, home from his uh, phone, he can do that, Brother Manzur can do that, right? We, we want to control everything, we want to control the alarm system at our home when we're traveling overseas, we want to make sure everything fits our schedule, we want to be in control. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from time to time, He wants to teach us who's really in control. He is in control. And some things he's going to do even if it messes up our schedule. Because he wants to teach us that he is in control and he wants to see whether we will surrender to that or not. So we want to have a baby on the weekend. Because that's when we're off. We want to have the baby on the weekend. We want to have the baby after Ramadan because in Ramadan it's going to be difficult. We want to have the baby after Eid. Well, do you control when the baby comes? No. The baby is going to come when it's going to come. The baby is going to come when it's going to come. 
That doesn't mean that I go and com- perform a cesarean, you know. No. Unless there's a medical need for that, I shouldn't do that. C-section, just why? Why do I want to have a C-section so that I can have the baby on the weekend, so I can go to work on the weekday? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that for certain things, for all things actually, we have to surrender to the will of Allah. We have to surrender to the plan of Allah. And a sh- uh, an expression of surrender is that are we going to tweak our schedule because of something that Allah wants us to do? So, this is something else that we learn from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The uh, eagerness of the Sahaba to surrender to the will of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi among other things that we can also learn from this hadith if we ponder and reflect and go back to the books of our ulama rahimahumullah ta'ala I just wanted to share this hadith with you may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all reach the month of Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us benefit from the month of Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and uh, help us fast the month in a way that he loves I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen, since I'm here, I'll also just uh, make this announcement, I guess, as I think all of you should already know, that today was, according to the uh, local Hilal sighting, today was the 28th of Shaban. Today was the 28th of Shaban. So now we have started the 29th of Shaban, right? Which means that tomorrow night, Friday night, is what we call Chandrat in Urdu. Tomorrow night we look for the Hilal. We look for the Hilal. If we find the Hilal, then inshallah Saturday is the first day of Ramadan. But if we do not find the Hilal, then Sunday is the first day of Ramadan. If we find the Hilal tomorrow night, early enough, inshallah, we have authentic, found, trustworthy reports that the Hilal has been cited tomorrow night, early enough, then we will have taraweeh tomorrow night, inshallah ta'ala. But if we don't find out until later, then we will not be able to have taraweeh tomorrow night. In that case, we will have taraweeh on uh, Saturday night, inshallah ta'ala. But according to what the data, the scientific data tells us, it is uh, going to be very easy, inshallah. It should be very easy to see the Hilal tomorrow night in North America, especially in Texas and Florida and the southern states. So I encourage myself and all of you, brothers and sisters, to look for the Hilal tomorrow night. This is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Look for the Hilal. It's a beautiful experience. There's a beautiful dua that you say when you see the Hilal. And inshallah ta'ala, if we have people who have seen the Hilal, then we will go with that inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa